Hello everyone. Today I wanted to show you my Kintsugi technique. Kintsugi is basically a way of repairing potty, pottery, repairing pottery with gold so that it can become useful again. And in this video, I'll show you a couple of different techniques um, to get the effect that you're looking for, uh, including techniques to get the little crackly effect so it kind of actually looks like mosaic or pottery. Um, I'll be using quite a few products along with some Technique Junkie stamps. So why don't we go ahead and get into it and I'll show you how I did it. Okay, so for this project, you're going to need a few items here. And I start out with the Tim Holtz Distress Watercolor cardstock. I do use the smooth side, something to spread my texture paste with. And I'm using the Crackle Texture Paste, and this is the Opaque. And I'm using also Crackle Paint, Clear Rock Candy. And it comes in this bigger size. And then I got some from Ranger, which I think are older bottles. Um, but they also have a, I think they have a white. I know I've got one sitting over here somewhere. And a clear. And then I'm going to be using Distress Collage Medium to start out. And I'll be using some Distress Spray Stains. And I'll be using some foundry wax. This is the foundry wax in Gilded. But I'm also going to show you how to do this with just embossing powder if you don't have foundry wax. The foundry wax uh, um, has a better impact, but it both work just fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out with my crackle paste. And this one's getting old. It's about a year old and it does start to get heavy and dry. And I'm just going to spread some along the top of this um, piece of watercolor paper. And I'm working on my media mat. This stuff cleans off with um, hand sanitizer if it dries up on you. And I'm just spreading that just like I would be doing a crumb layer on a cake. And I've got a little goober in there, so I'm going to flip it over. And I'm just spreading it. I want to co coat the entire piece of paper. And it is coming in different basic layers or levels. And you want that because the thicker it is, the more, um, the more cracks, the bigger cracks you get. So you want a variety of crackle. So I'm just putting a little bit more here and there on what might be the bald spots and spreading it out. Then I'm going to want to dry that. And you can dry it with a heat tool. If you wait and you're patient, I, bless you, <laughs> I can't. <laughs> so I've got this dry and I'm doing two pieces, but I'm not going to demo both of them. I, I just want to show you in the end different color choices and stuff. So I've got two pieces done here. I'm not worried about the stuff on the top, but I do want to make sure this is nice and dry. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to color my paper. So I've got my splat box here and I've got my cracked up paper. And I'm just going to add a little bit of water to it. And then I'm going to start spraying. Now you want to keep your colors fairly light, otherwise your stamping won't show up. So I did one earlier and I cut most of it out um, because I, it was too dark and you couldn't see my stamp. But I'm going to go ahead and do to have a do over here and just cut out my bad do. And <laughs> just remind you to keep your colors a light color. Because even with the dark, I tried even using black ink and it just really didn't show up very well. So I'm keeping it light. And I'm just going to spray it down with water to kind of spread out those colors. My aim is to get that all that color inside of those cracks. And then I'm just going to help spread that around. I, I don't, you can have some white spots, that's okay. You know, you do you, right? <laughs> Now what Tim always says. And then I'm going to give this a dry and just kind of move this color around. And it'll lighten up a little bit as it dries as well. But I want to make sure it's nice and dry before I go on to the next step. This is a lot of fun. And you don't even have to do the Kintsugi technique. You can just use the crackle part. <laughs> Um, you could do it on, you know, a, a cutout. I tried it with the, um, on top of ink with the translucent crackle paste, but I just couldn't get the same crackle effect. 
So I'm just adding a wee bit more color here. And I used peacock feathers, I used um, evergreen bough, I used pine needles, and I used um, uncharted mariners. So I've got some greens and blues, kind of reminds me of the bottom of a pool. I do like that color combination. Um, Honestly, Pine Needles is probably one of my favorites, so it's really hard to pick a favorite. That's like saying pick a favorite kid, but I did, you know. I had to. I didn't have a choice. So that's pretty much dry. I'm going to pull it out of my splat box and set it down on my media mat. And I'm just going to grab a piece of paper towel and just dab any excess liquid off of here. Now, don't worry if some of your chips fall off. That's fine. It makes it part of the beauty of it. It's embracing. Remember, Kintsugi is embracing imperfection. So that's what I'm doing here. And I'm going to put my paper in my stamping platform. Sorry, I got myself a little off camera here, didn't I? Trying to show everything and running out of space. But I'm going to be using the S305 Batik, which is one of my favorite stamps. And I'm just going to get it down into my stamp platform. And I am going to be using pigment ink. I'm going to be using the Versafine Claire and Warm Breeze. You don't, you want to use an ink that is waterproof, but also a pigment. Um, I tried it with the archival, but it really wouldn't stamp. The pigment inks are, are, are it. <laughs> so <laughs> whatever pigment ink you have that's waterproof is what you want to use. And then I'm going to go ahead and just stamp this down and I'll give it some pressure. Since it's a full body stamp here, I want to make sure I'm getting pressure on all the areas. And you can stamp obviously more than once. See, we're starting to get a pattern, but it looks to me like I need another coat. So that's exactly what I'll do. And do as many coats as you need, but you want to make sure it's dry before you do the next step. So the biggest, hardest part about this whole project is drying time. <laughs> so that's why I love my heated tool because I totally cheat with it. Now the <clears throat> rock candy uh, crackle paint smells funny. It kind of smells like ammonia, but I just get over it. All right, I'm happy with the way that stamped. Looking good. So I'm going to just kind of heat it up with my heat tool to set it. Now you want to make sure it's set because the next step you're going to be adding, you know, sort of a liquidy substance to it. So just heat set it and then test it. If it's still wet, you can take a paper towel and kind of dab a little bit. It won't pull up much of the ink. But you can see where in some spots I don't have crackle and I'm, I like that. I'm happy about that. Another imperfection. See, I gotta find a clean figure, finger to test it with and yep, it's still damp. So I'll grab my paper towel and just, you know, blot up the excess ink. There we go. Looking good already, but we have some more steps to do. So the um, next step, and I'm looking for a brush here. I'm What I'm looking for is my Tim Holtz brush. <laughs> I can't find it because they're shorter, so I'm sure it's buried in my brushes and <laughs> I can't find it. But that's okay. I'll come across it. I saw that there was a skinnier one, too. I kind of had my eye on. Um, okay, I'll grab a brush and clean it real quick. All right, got myself some clean brushes here. Then I've got collage medium. That's my next step. Now the reason I'm putting that on is for two reasons: to help the um, to help the chips stick to the paper and not fall off too much, and to add some extra tooth for the next step. Because um, you know it has tooth, sure it does, but I want I want this to stay stuck down too. So the collage medium dries really quick and you'll know when it's dry because it becomes matte because you can see now it looks sort of glossy. Um, I do help it along a little bit with my heat it tool because yeah, <laughs> I want to. All right, now you can see it looks nice and matte here again. 
that's what you're looking for. That's when you're going to know it's dry. And I do like to hit the back too, just to, if there's any, any, any inner layers, because as you can see, we're building layers on this thing. And so the layers underneath, it may be still damp. All right, now we've got that part done. Next part is to uh, paint on the crackle paint. Now this, the crackles in this crackle paint are very minute. You can't see them real well, but they are there. But what this does also is it gives it that sort of pottery shine. Um, maybe not pottery, but lacquer, uh, lac like a lacquer. So it gives it that shine, and that's what we're looking for. And I'm generously putting this down. Just swiping it back and forth here and there. It's not really going to make a texture because it will settle a bit. And this is another step to kind of help seal in all the little chip, all the little um, crackle pieces. But you do want to make sure the entire thing is covered. And um, I do dry this with my heat tool. Okay, so I've got that dry, and I've got my other piece here. And this one I did the. Um, Beautiful Nun. Love that one. I don't know why. I just love that nun. <laughs> oh, it's kind of nuts. I just, um, I kind of like the looks of her face. So now I'm going to trim these down to, you know, a size that's going to fit on my card front before I go on to the next step. And, you know, I'm doing roughly four by five and a quarter. The nun, she's, her shape is a little bit, I don't know. Um, she, if you try to cut her straight to the line, she's about three and three quarters. So I'm just trimming off to the lines and, uh, I'm even actually leaving the top line so that, I don't know, this is the way it's going to be. I'll cut a little bit of it off, but not a bunch, just a sliver. You can save those other pieces for, you know, your junk journals or other cards or whatever. So we've got both of these ready. Now it's time to do the Kintsugi effect. So what I'm grabbing here is no, not this paper. That's my expensive paper. I just want to grab some inexpensive cardstock because I do need to attach these to something so that we can make the crack and then mend it. So I've just got here, I think, I want to say it's some accent opaque or something, nothing real expensive. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut myself a crack in here. You could tear it, and I did try tearing it, but tearing it, I didn't, I didn't like the effect as much. It didn't look as much like a crack than it did a fissure. <laughs> so um, I'm just going to kind of just cut. And I want to cut sort of in a kind of a V shape, but not straight. So that I kind of get the look like a piece, you know, broke off. I'm going to do a little itty bitty sliver over on the other side here. So you just cut those out. I'm just going to pull on that. doesn't matter. And then on the beautiful nun, I'm only going to do one because I don't want to. I want her face. You know, I almost used this nun for Halloween, and I thought, you know what, I, I'm going to the hot place if I do that, so I'm just not going <laughs> to. <laughs> All right, so then I'm just going to glue the pieces back down onto these pieces of cardstock. We'll trim off the excess later. And just want to make sure you get them glued real well because they're thick pieces of paper by now. By now you've got, what, three layers of stuff on top of watercolor paper. So they're pretty thick. And plus that we're gluing on the rough side of the water watercolor paper. So I'm just making sure that I get along those edges and stuff. And I'll go ahead and get those glued down and be right back. Okay, I've got that glued down and I'm just giving it a good press and then I want to glue the other pieces back in. And I'm going to glue them back in like a puzzle piece. So the tricky part here is getting the gold on um, while I'm filming because um, in real life when I'm doing it, I need to have my face basically pressed up against it to be able to see the crack. 
but I'll do the best I can. So I'm just gonna glue the pieces back in and it will leave a little bit of a crack and that's what I'm looking for. And you'll be able to see the crack a lot better on the beautiful nun because um, we use embossing powder instead of gilding or um, foundry wax. All right, got those glued. I'm gonna do the nun and I'll be back. All right, we've got her put together. Now we're ready to roll with our next step. So I'm just gonna put my top back on my glue here because yeah, I'm bad about that. And I'm gonna grab my foundry wax and I'm using the gilded because it's the gold color. And I am going to take and just directly from the bottle, basically squeeze it onto those lines. Now, don't worry about using up your product Ranger won't make it for us if we don't use it by more. So please, please use your product. I would be sad if this stuff went away because I really do like it. I use it a whole lot. See, I'm having a lot of trouble seeing my cracks because I'm way back here and I don't have my face down on it. <laughs> Let's see, where's the end of that one? Let me bend it a little and see if I can see the opening. There we go. Then I'm gonna put the lid back on the foundry wax and put it aside. Probably you should put it a little farther away from your heat, but I forgot. So that's that. I wanna make sure my tool's hot and then I'm just gonna melt this stuff down. Well, not melt it, but put heat on it so it does its own thing. And it really looks like gold and it kinda, of, it covers those cracks. Now you could leave those cracks a little bit open too if you wanted to and just fill in. This is just the simple, the simple way. Do experiment, have fun with it. Go crazy. So in Kintsugi, these would be basically fairly flush against the old cracks, but I didn't try and I'm not gonna try sanding that. But I do wanna show you um, another way to do it in case you don't have the foundry wax. And what I'm doing is I'm getting out my embossing dauber and taking a little off. And it's always slippery, so you're going to see me. I'm not cutting or putting any scissor pressure into there. I'm just using the scissors to press up on that little lip so that I can get to the cap so I can paint with it. And you guys have seen me paint with this stuff before. It's amazing what you can do with it. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to paint in those little cracks. Now, the other tricky part about this is that if there's any dampness to the project at all, then your embossing powder is gonna stick to it. Maybe we like that because we're embracing imperfections. We're making them into something useful. <laughs> so, you know, um, you could splatter on this thing, black splatters, whatever you want from there, but I'm just sticking it, keeping it simple here for you for the sake of the video. So I'm going to grab my gold embossing powder, and this is just straight up gold from Ranger, and grab one of my little hot dog wrapper thingies and go ahead and dump embossing powder on here. And I'm going to try and aim mostly for the uh, fissures that I made. And if I see any naked spots, make sure they get filled in. I can see that one naked spot I need to deal with. So I'm just going to take my brush because I must have missed with the embossing powder with the, uh, yeah, embossing uh, dauber fluid thingy. <laughs> yeah, thingy is my best technical term. I'll go ahead and dump that back in. Now this one, if you really wanted that fissure to be filled in, you could probably do multiple coats. I didn't for the sake of the video. I don't know if people are more interested in the Kintsugi or the um, Kintsugi, Kintsugi or the crackling. <laughs> so either way, either or, do it or don't do it. Take your time and make the cracks really tiny. I don't know, you could do a lot, a lot with this little technique. So there's how it looks with embossing powder versus the foundry wax. You can see, you can clearly see the fissure, but I'm okay with that. 
because I'm still, I'm embracing that imperfection. And so all I have left to do here now is trim these cards down. And you see how the foundry wax kind of raised up and left a, you know, a, a nice, beautiful finish there. All I have left to do is trim these things down, mount them to card bases, and put on some sentiment. So I'm going to do that, and then I'll be right back. So before I do any mounting, I want to I want to grunge this thing up, dirty it up, adding the um, and I am using archival ink by the way. You could use any color you want, but I love the color. What happens when you throw the vintage photo on top of these blues? It just makes this beautiful kind of green, um, a brownish green, and it just gives it a nice antique look. You could do this with crayons if you wanted to. You could do it with paint. And I'm just making sure that I get this stuff, you know, in lots of spots to kind of really bring in some deep depth to it. Okay, I've got her done and I've got the um, blue one done. Okay, I'm just going to add some stuff to them and I'll be back. So here we go. This one I did a little bit of the Kintsugi on one of Tim Holtz's feathers and added a sentiment, be your own kind of beautiful. That's a technique junkie sentiment. And for the nun, I added Joya, Joa Noel. I don't know how to say it, sorry. Um, so the stamps that I used are Beautiful Nun from Technique Junkies. Isn't she gorgeous? I use Batik. And I'll uh, link them down below. I use Be Your Own Kind of Beautiful and Joyous Noel because I don't know how to say it in French. And I hope you like this video. If you do, please give me a thumbs up. And thanks for stopping by. Bye-bye.